okay class. So this video will probably be a little bit short. Uh, so in this video, we're gonna talk about plural effusions. So plural effusions are uh, excessive collection of fluid between the parietal and visceral pleura. So something is, you know, infiltrating into the plural space. We've moved away a little bit from the lungs. Now we're in the plural space. Again, this can be problematic, remembering that the plural space, that negative pressure, right, um, you know, is, is critically important for helping keeping our lungs inflated and to allow our lungs to inflate and deflate as we breathe. Disruption to this um, of any kind or infiltration is gonna make it harder for our lungs to um, inflate. Right, it's going to increase the work of breathing significantly. It's also going to create a bit of a restrictive defect. The lungs won't be able to inflate as well because we've changed, sort of changed the pressure in that plural space. Remembering in a normal, healthy situation, there's only about 10 milliliters of fluid. The plural space in many respects is a potential space. So what these patients often uh, present with is dyspnea, uh, cough, and pleuritic chest pain, which is this kind of um, kind of grading almost feeling um, what we call pleurisy um, in the you know in the in the chest they'll have decreased breath sounds over the area of the effusion they'll have decreased chest expansion over the area of the effusion again that's due to the you know the changes in that pleural pressure it's not allowing that part of the lung to inflate as well uh, they'll have some bronchial or hoarse or sounding sounds remembering we hear um, more of a we have more of a vesicular sounding or that low kind of rustling of leaf sounds in our peripheral lung segments. It should be kind of a silent, quiet noise. Um, what we'll end up hearing if on the border of that effusion, you know, on the border of that effusion will be this more uh, loud or harsher sound. And then when we listen right over it, um, due to the fluid in the plural space, we won't hear anything, right? We're basically putting a muzzle in between the, the sound transmission from the lungs. Um, now, uh, again, we also may hear a plural rub. You guys might remember that from your uh, cardiac auscultation. Um, it sounds pretty similar. It's basically if you put a you know a hand over your ear and rub over the edge or a hand over your, or your scope and rub over, over that, it's this rubbing noise. And again, thinking of that kind of irritation in the, in the pleura. Or just we have more friction as well in the pleural space because we have an infiltration. Um, in a very severe case, if the pressure becomes so high in the pleura, remember the pleura is supposed to be a negative pressure you know, system, it's a, it's a potential space. Um, if that gets so high, what it can cause is a shifting of the trachea to the opposite side because of the you know, high amount of fluid now in that space. Um, on the chest x-ray, we'll see what, what's called a meniscal sign. If you guys remember from basic um, chemistry, right? If you have fluid kind of in a column, right? We have this meniscus, right? For where it, you know, the, the top part. It's the same kind of concept. We basically have fluid that is sitting in the pleural space and it's creating this meniscus at the top. Um, the, if the effusion is small and the patient's not really, you know, super symptomatic or asymptomatic, they're typically just going to be monitored closely, right? And hopefully that our, you know, our lymphatics in our lungs kind of drain that out. Um, if it gets too severe, then uh, the patient will have to have a, a, a procedure called a thoracentethis. Um, we'll have a description of that in the notes below, um, which is basically a placement of a catheter or a chest tube to drain out that fluid. Again, it's asymptomatic. Um, it, they'll just be monitored closely. Um, if it really is severe and you're even seeing that mediastinal shift, especially, um, you know, then they're going to have a, uh, a, a, uh, a catheter placed in to drain that fluid. Now, there are two types of pleural effusion, um, and that's why I kind of want to have a, almost a separate unit on this. So uh, there's transudative and exudative. So transudative is it's generally from a non-infectious variety, um, results from mechanical factors uh, either impairing the rate of formation or absorption of pleural fluid. So either we have too much or we're just not able to resorb it back and drain it out into, you know, from our lymphatics. Um, this can be caused by heart failure. So there's just too much, uh, maybe even pressure in the, in the pulmonary capital or in the um, vasculature calling backflow in the pulmonary vasculature, eventually leaching out into the, um, into the pleura that can happen there. 
Um, it can happen with in patients with impaired lymphatic drainage. Um, so again, our lymphatics are kind of our sewer system. And if those aren't super effective, we can have back, back up of fluid in the pleura, uh, decreased osmotic pressure, um, as well as you know, high intrapleural pressure from atelectasis. We have compression, which compresses the pulmonary capillaries, causing backflow of uh, fluid potentially into the pleural spaces. Um, and again, this is not something that's an infection. We're not you know, triggering the mast cells. Um, so they're going to have typically a non-productive cough, right? It's not an infection. It's a, a fluid mechanics problem. Now, then there is exudative um, infection. Um, so exudative infections are what we see from a pneumonia, um, you know, malignancies, even tuberculosis, um, which we're not going to cover too much in this lecture because TB is super rare um, in, in the United States. Um, so uh, in, in, this, in this type of pleural effusion, uh, they have actually four stages, an exudative stage where it's producing a lot of mucus, a fibroperulent stage, and an organization stage. Um, and if it gets so severe, they could potentially develop a, an empyema, which is, um, we, you know, we talked about that a little bit earlier on in the chronic um, lecture, but it's basically pus, very purulent sputum um, in the pleural space. It's a very kind of bad situation to be in. And at the end of a, an exudative pleural fusion, you may see what we call a pleural peel, where it's kind of um, resolving um, almost pleural fibrosis or scar to the pleural, pleural tissue. Um, patients will have a productive cough if the cause is due to a pneumonia, um, especially a bacterial pneumonia, which can then produces a lot of um, exudate. Um, it's also important to note that um, we, we see this again with a lot of conditions. I, I highlighted some uh, transudative. Um, in fact, we see about 20 and some estimates say up to 55% of patients with a PE uh, may even have a pleural effusion in addition to other situations uh, going on in the, the pulmonary vasculature. Um, you know, with a, with a PE. So transudative, again, generally not infectious it's from mechanical factors, you know, inflammation, or um, anything that's going to gonna build up uh, intrapulmonary, uh, so it's going to increase pulmonary capillary pressure causing exudate of fluid into the pleural space. Non-productive cough. Exudative, um, which is usually from an infection, thinking mucus, purulent, you know, sputum and mucus. Um, they're thinking pneumonia. So if the pneumonia gets really bad, sometimes we can get um, you know, leaching basically or exudate into the pleural space. Either way, it causes a restrictive defect, impairs our ability to expand um, the chest wall and ventilate the lungs. So uh, that's pleural effusions in a nutshell.